Let's talk about lighting your levels. Now, when you're creating lights for your levels with UDK, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind. The first and foremost is that UDK makes use of the light mass system. And light mass is used to calculate realistic static lighting, such as bounce light. So light can come out of a light source, it can hit the ground, bounce off a wall, come back and hit other objects. It keeps you from having to create a lot of light actors to simulate the effect of ambient lighting in your level. And in effect, it makes the overall lighting process of your levels much, much easier. Now, there are some required objects to use light mass. First off, you should generally have a light mass inclusion volume, which in this really simple level that I've set up, I already have one. Now, I'm going to get the builder brush out of the way so we can see it. It's just this great big yellow volume we see in closing the entire level. Now, to create one of these, all you need to do is size up your builder brush accordingly, and then you can right-click on the Add Volume button, and you'll actually see the Light Mass Importance Volume. What this does is this focuses light masses calculations into this area, which will speed up your lighting process extremely. Now, uh, if you have a complicated level that goes through a lot of different areas, you can just have several of these volumes outlining all of the areas of your level to make sure that light mass knows where to build lighting. Please keep that in mind. Now, that said, lighting is kind of a deep subject in Unreal. There are a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, in fact, you could spend months just studying up on various lighting techniques and artistically different ways to handle lighting in various situations. So the goal here is really just to introduce you to the different types of lights available, uh, to give you an overview of the key properties that you need to know in order to uh, work with your lights, and then we're just going to kind of leave it at that. And then from there, you can start working with lighting on your levels and a lot of what you're going to learn, you're just going to get from experience. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'd like to do is talk about some of the properties available to all lights in general. So here in this scene, I have just a regular plain Jane point light. And I'm going to open this up. Now if we expand the light category underneath light component, we have three categories. The first is light component, and this is where you're going to find all of the common lighting uh, properties. This is, You're going to find all the properties in here will be in every kind of light that you're going to create. Now down from here we have the light mass properties. These are specific only to light mass and we'll talk about those. And then we have the point light component properties. These are specific just to point lights. You won't find these in things like directional lights, though you will find a point light component in a spotlight, which is something we'll take a look at just a little bit later. Now let's start here with light component. Now I'm not going to go over every single property. In fact, some of these are legacy properties that are here for backwards compatibility, but some of the more important ones. Uh, at the very top we have effect composite shadow direction. This actually affects light environments. Now a light environment without getting too sidetracked is a special way to calculate lighting on a dynamic object. Rather than actually take in dynamic light from all the lights in your scene, it simulates the dynamic lighting by using a spherical harmonic light, which is kind of like a light that uh, changes. It's like a sphere of light blasting in on the target that changes depending on the lights that it sees all around the scene. And then a directional light coming up from underneath to simulate bounced light. Now, those are activated by default whenever you create a dynamic object. For instance, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. If we come over to the uh, content browser. Let me grab any static mesh. I don't even really care which one. But all these look terrible, or at least not what I have in mind. So, ah, this guy. Here we go. So, just any static mesh. Let's grab this funny little block right here. I'm going to close that and add this to the level, not as a static mesh. I've got to click load static mesh where I can use it. But we're actually going to add it as an interp actor. So an interp actor is a dynamic object which we could set up, say, with matinee or kismet to move around the scene. And if we take a look at his properties, look under dynamic SM actor, and you see a light environment category. And this is where you can control your light environment. And again, that's just a system that allows the dynamic actor to account for all of the light sources in a level and create a simplified lighting result without having to resort to dynamic lights. It's really just a performance booster. So with all of that said, let's go back over here to our light and open up its properties. Effect composite shadow direction will just 
affect the direction of the single shadow created by a light environment. So if you have multiple lights affecting an object, if that object is being lit by a light environment, you'll only see one shadow, which does help boost performance. Now down from here, uh, that was kind of wordy, wasn't it? Now down from here, we've got brightness. This does exactly what you think it does. This makes the light brighter or darker. Uh, Epic recommends that you don't go over a value of 16, though you can really go as high as you want. We can set it to 10, and we get a really, really washed out, super bright light. Or we can set it all the way down to 0 0.2. Now, I do want to throw this out there. This property, like many that you'll find inside the properties window, has a slider attached to it. So we could set this to a value. And you see in the background, we've kind of got this bar. You can click and drag on this and set the value manually. Just keep in mind that as you do that, you're filling up the undo queue. So as you tap undo, and I'm hitting control Z right now, we only get like one or two uh, movements along, you know, every time we're sliding this, we're changing by these little tiny values and we're just pumping up that undo queue. So undoing something like this is a little bit tricky. Please keep that in mind. Now, moving down from here, we have some shadow controls. We can decide whether or not we're even going to cast a composite shadow. And what that is, is if we're using a light environment, that's whether or not we're going to cast a shadow into it. Uh, you can decide whether or not you want to cast dynamic shadows. This is if you have a mover or a dynamic object, whether or not this light would cast uh, moving shadows along with it. You can override all shadow casting by just switching it off here. Just switch off uh, cast shadows. Or would you like to cast static shadows? Now, this is on by default, and this is how you get the static shadowing around your level. We have the enabled checkbox. This turns the light on and off. Now, if I turn it off in the level, everything goes to unlit. That's because this is the only light in our scene. If I switch back to lit mode, everything is pitch black. So when you notice that your lighting just suddenly looks terrible, it's just because you have none, and that was the only object in your, uh, in your scene that was emitting light. Now, force dynamic light can help you out in situations where you need uh, stencil dynamic shadows or you need to light a dynamic object. You can switch that on here. Now, moving down through the properties, we're going to jump over to light color. This is fairly obvious. You can use this to change the color of your light. If we click the little, uh, it says find object in content browser, but that's not what it does. The magnifying glass actually opens up color picker. So we could make the light a really nauseating shade of green, which now immediately means that I've got to take my brightness back down. And it's still pretty bad. So we'll pull that uh, back down to just kind of a, a nice white color and click OK. And you can punch the numbers in manually, or you can, of course, pick a color that you like. Now, down from here, we have the light environment bounced light brightness. This allows you to control the brightness of the simulated bounced light of a light environment. There's, so there's a lot of light environment settings. Uh, if you are using bounced light, you can modulate its color using the light environment bounced modulation color. We have the light shadow mode. Now, by default, this is using modulated shadows. I'm not going to go too heavily into the different types of shadows here, but in short, light shadow normal or normal shadows are accurate, but they're very expensive. Modulated shadows are very good looking, though not as technically accurate. They're just a whole lot cheaper. And then modulate better is just a little more expensive than modulate and will help when you're shadowing uh, things like emissive surfaces that don't necessarily need to, uh, to have shadows landing on them. Though, admittedly, with light mass, this isn't really as much of an issue anymore. So you can generally, you can just leave this at modulate and forget about it. Now, moving down through the other properties, another important one we have is use volumes way down here at the bottom. Now, use volumes is cool, though light mass, while it doesn't necessarily make it obsolete, it does make lighting volumes a little hard to see, and I'd like to show you how light volumes work. To do that, we've got a static mesh that I just put in here, so this would be a perfect example. What I'm going to do is select this static mesh and click on the cube button for the red builder brush, and what that's going to do is put a little 256 cube around this static mesh to really show that off to you. With the Builder Brush selected, I'm going to hold the L key and drag around with the left mouse button. So you see how that volume now surrounds that static mesh. I'm going to move our light so that he's also inside the volume. Like so. Now, I'm going to select our Red Builder Brush, right-click, and add a light volume. And we'll get the Builder Brush out of the way so we can see the volume. Now, if we open up the light come under light component. 
Notice that Use Volumes is on. Now we can choose what type of volume we'd like to have. Would you like an inclusion volume or an exclusion volume? An inclusion volume will say, hey, I want you to light only those objects that are inside this volume. And an exclusion volume essentially says, I don't want you to light anything that is uh, inside this volume. Basically, I want you to exclude everything inside this volume. We're going to use an inclusion volume. Now to use this, all we need to do is come over to our inclusion volumes property, click the add new item button, make sure we, we need to select our volume here, but if we do that, we're going to lose the property. So make sure you lock the properties window, then select your volume, and then we can click the use button and that'll plug that in. Now take a look at our result. It's already started to have an effect. Let me undo that little accidental movement that I made there. Now only those surfaces which are touching or are contained within our volume are actually being lit and nothing else is. Now if I do a quick build, this will become even more apparent. So I'll give this just a second to calculate. Light mass actually runs pretty quickly for this very, very simple level. And there we go. So we'll close that. And here's what I wanted to point out. This is doing its job. Uh, this static mesh is just barely brushing against the edge of the volume. And this static mesh is within the volume, and that's all good. But you'll notice that you seem to be getting some lighting out here on objects that are not inside the volume. And that's because this volume, while it does affect the direct lighting of a light, it does not affect indirect lighting created by light mass. So be aware of that. All right, so that's a look at the base light component properties. Let's go ahead and just leave it at that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video where I'm going to talk about some of the properties for the light mass properties. So that'll wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.